All right, guys. What I'm going to do is show you a technique that I learned from reading on the internet. So I needed to know how to dial in a steady rest. I mean, I know I've seen Keith Finner and Mr. Pete and all of them show us how to uh, bring the finger, you know, dial your your bar in and then bring the fingers in until you hear them ringing. You know, you feel the uh, resistance here or uh, you can see the bearings just moving, but I was having a problem with the work walking itself out of the chuck. Uh, so obviously I was dialing it in wrong and I needed to cut threads on the end of something and so that's not going to work if the thing's moving out of it. So first thing I'm going to do, right now I just have it rough set up in here and I did dial it in, uh, but I measure back to see where I need for uh, clearance and I'm going to create a bearing surface here that is perfectly round and true for these jaws to ride on and then I will show you how I dial it back in when I flip this bar around because this is a different size radius and so the fingers will have to be adjusted and I'll have to dial it back in. But uh, Right now I'm just going to clean up this bearing surface here. I just made a pass on it and it was a pretty rough pass, so I'm going to go back over it kind of slow and make as smooth of a surface as I can and then touch it with a scotch Bright pad. So you can hear that weld. Scotch bright is a wonderful thing. Alright, now I got a perfect bearing surface for this steady to ride on, and then it won't be making all that noise like it just was. <clears throat> Alright, I'll break this setup, flip it around, and then I'll show you how I set up my indicator on the chuck and reach out, and I'm going to touch on the bar out here. And that's how I'm going to determine the run out on this end because what it's going to do is act like a universal joint and it's going to bend the bar back and forth on the chuck a little bit. Alright. Set this up. I'll give myself just a little bit of play here at the chuck end. It really doesn't matter because I'm going to part it off outside the chuck. I want to put some pressure on it, but I don't want to squeeze it so hard that it turns this into a triangle instead of a circle. So, alright. Close these jaws up. And I'm going to drag this as much as possible and get it out of the way. Got a new dial indicator too. 30 bucks. That's a little union. If you can see that. Anyhow. Union tool. Super test. Jeweled to the half thousand. The glass keeps falling off of it, so I just have it off right now. But alright, besides that, let's dial this in. I'm gonna set it up here. I'm going to make sure and try to set the, without maxing the indicator out, set the indicator as close to the center of the pipe as I can, you know, the, the high point there in the center. So, oh. All right, so I've dialed in. It says seven thousandths on it right there. Can you even read that? You can't. All right, let me get you set back up closer where you can read this, and then uh, we'll continue. Okay, so let's hope that you can read that. 
your precariously balanced on top of my stool. <clears throat> okay, so I look clear, it clears my tool. Okay. As I rotate this around, right now none of the jaws are touching. They shouldn't be because I cut out from there. Um, this indicator will read different. Okay, I've got clear. Okay. All right, I got room to play here. So now what I'm going to start doing, I need to loosen all of these. And start dialing them in. I already I've made a difference right there. And I basically clock the point with the uh, fingers on my steady rest. So, you know, you can't read it all the way around, but reading on this finger right now I'm at 1000. Okay. Let's roll it back around here. Under this finger, and I'm reading 5000. So let's dial that in. Now I'm reading 1. This is tiny right there. Yeah. Okay, now I'm reading 10,000, so we're way out. You know, one one thousandth on both of these and 10 on the top, that's not. And it's in the direction of tightening. You see the, the finger indicator moving? As I tighten that up, that indicator moves. There's 9, 8, 7, you see? So, I'm thinking... Somewhere in the neighborhood of seven thousandths, being as that's how I dialed the thing in when it was loose, that's where I need to be. So clock in here. There's there's six thousand, so let's go with six for now. I'll go just a little tighter than what Okay, that's that's six there. One thousand. No, so this is all, that's too loose. Okay, so let's go to five. See, now it's too tight. Five thousandths. And that's because the back one back here is back at three. So you have to keep moving it around. I mean, it's not an easy task to dial in a three jaw chuck. There's four thousandths. And five. Let's go to four. Try not to move my dial indicator. So there's five, let's go to four. Let's just stay at five then, I guess. Five thousandths is, is probably zero and loose. Loose enough to rotate without. You know, it's probably four and a half. Let's, let's dial in four and a half. There's four and a half there. It's nice and loose. We're at four. Four and a half. There's a five and a half, so that'll make up the slack as soon as I tighten it. There's four and a half. So now, four and a half, five. again. Four and a half. 
four and a half. I can still rotate this by hand. Got four and a half. Again, just keep bumping it around. Oh, we got a five and a half. You see, now I'm moving in the opposite direction. It's probably not four and a half, it's probably closer to four and three quarters. Ten and a half. There's four and ten and a half. Ten and a half. How did we end up there? Nobody knows, but now we're there. I can rotate it by hand. So now I'm going to snug up all of the uh, locks and the steady rest, and that is dialed in. We're now running perfectly axial all the way around. That indicated where it wasn't moving anywhere on the pipe, you see. Staying in one spot, so we just indicated one spot up and down all the way around until it was running perfectly parallel from here to there, wherever this indicator was pointing. And that's over half of the distance. If it's dialed in within a half a thousandth, over half of the di over more than half the distance, I think I'm good. So now, what does it sound like when it runs? Let's get a little bit of lube on there first. Sounds pretty good to me. The thing looks pretty square. Alright, well there you go. So you don't want to watch me cut all of this. Maybe I'll show you cutting me. I'll, uh, Show it cutting threads and then uh, parting off, but you can see that's running true and I've got no problems. Steady rest isn't bouncing around. You know, I, I put my hand on it here, I can hardly feel any vibration. So, it's dialed in, everything's running square. This is how you would dial in if you've got to set up a really long shaft, set up your steady rest on your milling table or something across the room. This is how you would dial it in. Uh, there's no other way. I mean, you could try with lasers and other things, but basically you've got to get a bar and you've got to measure out perpendicular to the chuck, which is axially because that chuck's been faced perpendicular to this line or to the axis. So uh, you've got to get out there. Now, the thing that I did read was that you, I didn't account for sag in my indicator setup. Now, it was pretty short. And so I don't think that there was sag there, but I didn't account for it because I figured it was minimal. Um, if you've got a really long bar and you've got a long indicator uh, piece there, then you definitely got to account for that. It, it may be more than a thousand. And so take that into consideration. But <clears throat> like I said, I, I've never seen this demonstrated. I've read about it, uh, but I'd never seen it demonstrated on YouTube. So I figured I'd make a video and show you guys how it's done because uh, I was really happy when I found out how to do this. Another five thousand, so I know that is actually five thousand there, so I could probably go a little faster, but every time I got over sixteen hertz, that's when the uh, vibration was induced. And like I said, I'd rather go low and slow here, not wreck the machine. I don't need to speed this thing up. I'm, I would rather take care of it. Uh, so for me, this is adequate. This is all I really am after.
just to get the job done. And you can hear it starting. Just a, it wants to start those harmonics, but it's just below the speed where they can really get a good cycle going between the tool posts and everything else. So that variable speed frequency drive is uh, definitely a plus. And that's a pretty quiet running lathe. I got it dialed in pretty well here, I think. So, all right, guys, take it easy.